So, now you know how to do y equals a sine bx plus d. This video is about adding in an extra little plus c. We're adding c to the x value, not to the whole function. All right, so what a did was stretch it this way. What b did was stretch it this way. What d did was move it up or down. And what c is going to do is to move it left and right. Y equals sine x with all the a, b, d values stripped out. Now, watch what happens when I add 1 to the x. This is my c value. You can see that as I add a number, it shifts left. It shifts the opposite of what you might expect, which you're used to with functions now. If I subtract something from the x, it shifts the other way. So here's where I started uh, at 0. And I'm just going to shift it. Uh, two units to the left. So if I want to shift it two units to the left, I have to add two to it. Okay, that's what the adding the C value does. Now, if we uh, put it all together, we can uh, squash it by changing the A value to 0 0.5. We can shift the whole thing up or down depending on what we want to do, we've shifted up, and then we can squeeze the whole thing by increasing our B value to whatever it is that we want to increase that to. All right, so that's how A, B, C, and D are going to work in conjunction. We can now sketch something using all of that. I'm going to sketch Y equals negative 2 cos pi on 6, X plus 3, plus 1. So first I'm going to identify all my a, b, c and d values. So a equals negative 2, um, b equals pi on 6, c equals 3, and d equals 1. Now the order I like to work in is first I deal with my d value. So my d value is 1, it moves it up by 1. And I might... Uh, might count up in twos here like this. So that's going to be my new middle of my equation. I want you to do a light line there. That. Okay, that's, that's the thing I like to deal with first. The thing I like to deal with second is this. The amplitude. The amplitude is negative 2. So that's that means two things. It's going to have an amplitude of 2, which means, so we can sort of ignore the negative for a moment. It means that uh, we're going to go 2 up from 1, so 3 will be our maximum, and we're going to go 2 down from 1, so negative 1 will be our, our minimum. So create these little like train tracks that my function will move through. Okay. Just make it clear, that's the x-axis x -axis there. Okay, not only that, but it's negative, and it's also a cosine function. I probably need to put this in my notes. It's a cosine function, which means that cosine functions don't start in the middle like, um, like sine functions do. They start at the extremes. They either start at the top or start at the bottom. Now, because it's negative, it means it's flipped upside down, so it starts at the bottom. So I'll just put that in notes here. Starts at the bottom. Okay, now the next thing that I'll probably work on is this plus, is this C value. The C value tells me that the whole function has been shifted three units to the left. Three units to the left which means that my new starting point is going to be three units that way. Now, I might just put that on ice for a second and deal with my period. So period equals 2 pi on b, which in this case, I might just work that down here, period 
equals 2 pi on b. In this case, that's 2 pi on pi on 6, which is 2 pi times 6 on pi, which ends up being 12, a period of 12. So, now that I know that, I might just sort of mark in some, some units here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, this is a bit boring. Decided to count up in twos or down in twos and up in twos. You'll see why in a minute. So now we need to put it all together. It started, it starts at three units to the left because it's been shifted to the left three units. It's a cosine curve, but it's negative, which means that it starts at the bottom. So this is the bottom. It starts there. Now it has a period of 12. Okay, so it's going to take 12 units to repeat, which means that from negative 3, if I add 12 to that, I'm going to end up at positive 9. So it's going to repeat between here and here. And I might also count backwards. From negative 3, if I subtract 12, I'll end up at negative 15. And it's going to repeat to there as well. Um, I added a little bit to the question here sketch between negative 5 and 9. Okay, so um, now because the period's 12, half of 12 is 6, and so we need a halfway point between negative 3 and, and 9, which would be 3. Now that halfway point is, is there, and at that halfway point our cosine function will be up the top of its, of its train tracks. Uh, and then we can add in another halfway point by subtracting 6 from there, which would be negative 9. Um, now, we need to go halfway between there and there. We need to go halfway between 3, negative 3 and 3. And that's going to be where it passes through the centre. And then halfway between uh, 3 and 9, that's 6. Halfway between here and here... Uh, between negative 3 and negative 9, which would be negative 6. And halfway between here and here, which would be um, whatever this number is here, negative 12. Okay, we've got these nice little like, things, but obviously we need to join them up with some curves. So we draw in what should be a nice, neat little curve All right, Whew. that is a full sine, sorry, this is a cosine curve sketch of y equals negative 2 cos pi on 6, x plus 3, plus 1. It has been, let's just take another little look at what it would look like. It is a uh, sine curve that has been, um, it's got an amplitude of negative 2, it's got a d value of positive 1, it's got a b value of um, pi on 6, which is a, a relatively small number, approximately 0 0.52. And it had a c value of 3 there. Now, if I take a look at that, oops. I'm looking at a sine curve. I should be looking at a cosine curve. Let's just alter that so it's actually a cos curve and we'll see. Hopefully. There you go. All right, and that is exactly what we've sketched on our uh, piece, piece of paper. You can see it's got a, a bottom value of negative 3 there, a bottom value of negative 3 there, passes through at 1, passes through at 1, maximum of 3 at 3, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's how you sketch y equals a sine bx plus c plus d, or y equals a cos bx plus c plus d.